What if the Soviets won the Cold War? Since the fall of the Soviet Union, the United States has been the most powerful nation on Earth, and one could argue it being the world's sole hegemon. And so the question to ask would be, what if the roles were reversed and the Soviet Union won the Cold War? What would the world be like? How would the borders look? That is the question of this alternate history. The Soviet Union's chances of winning the Cold War were always very low, and I'll explain why next. A big reason is that the Warsaw Pact nations simply wanted to be with the Americans more than they wanted to be with the Soviets. This is for a couple reasons. The first being is that the NATO nations did much better after World War II than the Warsaw Pact nations and were much wealthier. And secondly, the Warsaw Pact nations viewed the Russians as conquerors, not as protectors. A second major reason is that it would be tough for the Soviets to create pro-Russian revolts inside the United States because most Americans are generally content with the system. This is shown as, as that it's been 150 years since there's been a revolt inside the United States, which is pretty astounding. Also, that revolt wasn't to change the system, it was to keep the system the same. Well, meanwhile, most Russians didn't really like the Soviet Union, and were just going along with it, so it would be easy for the Soviet Union to collapse in on itself. The third reason was that the Soviet economy was just plain too inefficient to actually be able to function for much longer. Oftentimes, goods produced in factories never made it to the populace, and the Soviet Union produced a lot of weapons because it was too inefficient to produce peacetime goods to send to the population. For this timeline to work, several things would have had to have happened. The first being is that the U.S. would have had to have been a bad ally. In this timeline, the U.S. would have had to have backed down and not protected its allies in its time of need. For example, not helping the South Vietnamese or the South Koreans when they were invaded, thus making nations feel that the Soviets were a better chance and ally to pick if they wanted to be protected. Secondly, the recession of the 70s would have had to have been on Great Depression levels to disillusion the American population, to make them think that capitalism was a failed ideology and that the government had failed them, and that communism was a better route to go. Thirdly, the U.S. would just have to have a slew of inept presidents that would drive the U.S. into the dirt economically and geopolitically time and time again for this timeline to work. Finally, the USSR would have to have a slew of amazing leaders, and I'm talking like Charlemagne and FDRs here, that would make the USSR more efficient, improve the standard of living, and generally clean up all of the party inefficiency and uh, make the population content. This timeline would start in the late 40s with the U.S. failing to change the elections enough in France and Italy so that the communists don't win, and thus France and Italy become communist and thus USSR allies. Secondly, the U.S. would have to not defend South Korea in the Korean War for worries that the Russians or the Chinese might retaliate and it would lead to World War III. A similar thing would also happen to Vietnam, thus showing the U.S.'s other allies that the U.S. was not a good ally and the Soviet Union was a better f bet if you wanted it to be defended. In this timeline, the flower power movement of the 60s would have a much more adult and mature outlook, because it would include many adults who felt disaffected by this latest recession and distrusted capitalism and the government. The Russians would actually try to arm these groups as well as the Black Panthers, being a disaffected, violent uh, group. As the 80s started, and the young boomer generation would still not have jobs, the U.S. would be on the verge of rebellion. In the 80s, the urban parts of the U.S. would rebel and declare a communist state, and the U.S. would fall into the Second Civil War. I actually think the government would win the Civil War, mainly because the army would side with the government because the army is very conservative, and thus would put their lot behind the government instead of the communist rebels. Also, the farmers in the countryside would likely stay with the government because the farmers would fear the communists taking away their land, and thus would want to stick with the government, and without that, the cities would starve to death and would be cut off. In the end, the communist rebels would be crushed, and the government's order would be re-established over the United States. After many decades of inefficient civilian rule, 
that which led to a communist revolt that was only barely put down, the army would deem the civilian authorities unable to deal with the threat, and the U.S. Army would likely take over the government. Since the army is fairly conservative, we can assume that the United States, being a nation run by the army in this timeline, would also be much more conservative than it was in our timeline. Since the Communists almost destroyed the U.S. in this timeline, the new U.S. government would be violently anti-Communist, and would try to crush all signs of Communism, and Communism would basically become a new heresy, similarly to how it was in Nazi Germany or Franco's Spain. Meanwhile, with the U.S. taking a couple year break for its civil war and rebuilding after its civil war, this would mean that the U.S. would stop being a superpower, and thus, this would be a perfect time for the Russians to conquer the remainder of NATO Western Europe, including Benelux, Denmark, and West Germany. With the USSR being the major power, China likely would have never have been opened up to capitalism in the Western world, and thus likely would have remained under a poor and isolationist Maoist regime. After the US recovered from the Civil War, one of two things could have happened. The first being that the U.S. decides that the outside world is no longer from the U.S., and Japan, the U.S., and the Anglo world become isolationist and only trade with themselves, leaving and ignoring the rest of the world. The second possible thing that could have happened is that the United States and its remaining allies go on an anti-communist crusade to regain American power, which would last into the present, and I honestly can't tell you how it would end. The USSR would still not collapse in this timeline, mainly because they would be in much better economic shape after having generations of FDRs and Charlemagnes. Also, they'd be much more efficient for the same reason. The conquest of Western Europe would also show that communism was the superior ideology, and the near collapse of America would also do a similar thing, so the Soviet Union would not collapse in this timeline. Without the United States being a major force in this timeline, apartheid would have taken much longer to end because without the U.S.'s sanctions, that would mean that there wouldn't have been as many economic ramifications. In this timeline, the 9-11 attacks would be directed towards the USSR instead of the United States because the USSR would be the major land power in Eurasia, and also, the USSR is a atheist power, while the United States is mainly Christian. And, because in Islamic thought, the Christians are also peoples of the book, this would make the atheists worse religiously. Also, Afghanistan would still not have gotten over the USSR's invasion. For this reason, the Soviet Union would have to get involved with military troops in lengthy wars in the Middle East. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this timeline, please comment or subscribe. What if Altist? Thank you for watching.